so we are in the presence of a legend today. I have in the new bronze variant of the Longine Legend Diver. I've always really liked this watch and not too long ago, back around the holidays, I nearly made a trade for one. It ended up falling through, but it's still on the radar for a possible addition to the collection. Huge thanks to Sam over at Gem Bijou for lending this in. He's been really great about getting some very cool watches into my hands to share with you guys on the channel the last couple of months. So that's been awesome. If you're shopping watches, check them out at gembijou.com. They are an authorized dealer for Longines and many other brands. So let's get right to it and take a look at the watch. All right, now... Lately, I've been getting hands-on with a few watches from Longines, mostly reissues or reimaginations of some of their back catalog of watches. So far, each has impressed, and so has this new version of the Legend Diver. I'm a big fan of having some different case materials in the watch box to have a bit of variety, and this is a very good contender for a bronze watch. If you're looking to fill that void in your collection in this price range, I'll admit I usually prefer a regular diver versus most compressor style divers, but the Legend Diver has just a really good looking design. And this model with the bronze against the green is beautiful. Bronze and green just always seem to work so well together. So let's talk about the case here first, and it's a pretty traditional design. Round case, we've got a good curvature to the lugs. It is fully brushed. Interestingly, they went with a titanium case back, which is hypoallergenic. We've got what I keep wanting to call the scuba dude, but we're going to reserve that for the Vostoks. We've got the scuba diver guy there, though, with the harpoon at the ready. Over here on the opposite side of the watch, we have our two crowns with the grid pattern. Both are screw down crowns and both are butter to use. Up top is the crown for the internal bezel. I'll just unscrew it there. There's actually a slight tactile feel to it as you turn it. Most tend to be completely smooth, but there's a certain action to this that's a little hard to describe that just feels good to use. We'll get everything back to the 12 o'clock and screw it back in. Same goes for the crown down at the four. Nice, smooth action. Very smooth winding action of the ETA based caliber L888, which beats at 25,200 vibrations per hour and has a power reserve of approximately 72 hours. These movements are based on the ETA 2892, but with a lower beat rate to extend the power reserve and also uses a silicon balance spring helping to increase magnetic resistance. The dial goes from green at the center and transitions to black on the outer perimeter. One thing worth mentioning is the date, or actually the lack of date, the originals were without date, and so were the first reissues. They added the date a few years back, and this is the first Legend Diver without one again for quite a while now. It keeps more in line with the original from the 60s, although this is veering from that in a bunch of other ways with the bronze, the colors, the size, all of that. But I think it does look better without the date. I like the font they're using at the 3, 6, 9, and 12. Cool script just above the 6 there too where it's printed automatic. Up at the 12 is the old school winged hourglass logo. Now I'm not sure if the handset is bronze but it does match the tone of the case. I've always really liked the way they did the hour hand on these watches. Now, the loom is good, but not great. It actually lasts quite a long time. It's just not super bright. Seems to be a trend for some reason from the Swatch Group divers I've looked at lately. It's not bad, but there's definitely better out there. So this comes with two straps. We have the brown leather that's currently on the watch. It's a good quality leather, a very nice leather strap, but my favorite part is the buckle. It 
it has some great details there it kind of matches the pattern the uh, grid pattern on the crowns the watch also comes with a second green nato strap this is a brand new watch so i didn't want to mess with strap changes but i think this would look awesome on the watch we've also got the same buckle in the box, which, by the way, these Longines boxes are massive. This is the corner of it right here. It would easily fill the entire frame. But in that box is also a spring bar tool to swap straps. Size on the watch is 42 millimeters in case width. The lug to lug is going to be long depending on your wrist size coming in at 52.4 millimeters. A few of these Longines Heritage watches I've looked at lately have had long lugs like that. Works on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, but it won't work for everyone. Lug opening on the watch is 22 millimeters and the thickness is 12.8 millimeters, including that gorgeous boxed sapphire crystal. Water resistance on the watch is 300 meters. So overall feelings are, I think this is a very cool watch. I love how it wears. The loom could be better, and again, that long lug-to-lug -lug is just going to be a straight no-go depending on your wrist size and preference, but otherwise a nice watch. It'd be neat to see how this patina is over time. If you get a bit of that green patina, it would look cool against the green dial. MSRP on this one is $3,900 here in Canada or 3K USD. And this one is available currently at Jambiju. Link to their site will be below. Thanks again to them for giving us some time with the watch. Thanks to you guys for stopping by and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.